the county did have a Gazette newspaper that we no longer have. And so this county no longer has a reliable journalistic news source where you can get information about things that's happening at the county level, with um, county council, with the county executive, things that are happening at the educational level. And we say that it's hyper-local news because we also attempt to report things at a neighborhood level as well. Um, and because we live in DC, which can, I'm sorry, we live in Maryland and we're in Montgomery County, sometimes it can feel like we're in the shadow of DC. So on the DC broadcast news, they might be discussing um, DC Council, federal, but not really discussing Montgomery County. So we really have that space where we can share Montgomery County news. And that's one of the things that we do. We also, um, we have two cable channels, channels 19 and 21. And the content that we create and the content that we help nonprofits or individuals create, we share on our cable channels, but that content does not belong to us if you create it. So if you create something with MCM, you are actually the executive producer. We don't own it and we don't want to control it. We just want to share it so we can have local content on our channels. Um, we have modern multimedia production equipment and um, fully staffed professional production team one of which happens to be in the room, um, because we like to get out into the community and show other folks important things that's happening. So this is a really exciting day, not just for Montgomery College, but for the community to see that this is something that the college is doing. So we attempt to go out into the community and share important things that's happening. Um, another important arm of our organization is our community engagement, with, which is what the area that Danielle manages. So underserved publics, yeah. So for the people who don't have a voice and the people who can't go to ABC or CBS to get their story told, we are there to help them tell that story. We are here to amplify, amplify community voices. I have a sticker on my computer to remind me every single day that that's my job, to amplify community voices. We have targeted citizen engagement. We work with youth. We work with seniors. We work with everyone in between. Anyone who wants to learn how to do media and how to create content, yes? We have community engagement. So we have round tables where we bring the community in and ask them questions. We have, what was our creative circle? This is our director of development over here, so I'm looking at her to keep me honest here. We've had creative circles where we've asked creators to come in and just talk to us about their needs. And that is really the concentration for me moving forward this year, is trying to figure out what's the best way that we can support our community. I have an idea of what I think they should learn. I have an idea of the kind of content that they should be creating, but I'm not creating it for myself anymore, thank goodness. I'm not creating it for myself anymore, so we want to hear from these underrepresented, underrepresented communities on how they can best tell their stories. For instance, uh, I spoke to a couple of people who are in the outskirts of Montgomery County and they don't feel like anyone's covering them. They don't feel like their needs are met. They have completely different needs. Hi! They have completely different needs from Rockville or Bethesda and they need their stories told as well, right? So that's what we're here for. So that's my engagement portion of it. I enjoy that the most. I'm hoping that we can also talk about some of your underserved communities and how we can service them in NCM. Even though NCM is one organization and we have one mission, we have several audiences and we have several ways that we communicate with them. And so we have to be strategic about how to connect to each and every one of those audiences. For example, our viewers. So we have two cable channels and we still actually have people that watch TV. Um, <laughs> those folks tend to be older. Um, they tend to be interested in government. Um, they tend to be seniors. They're very involved in community. They want to know things that's happening locally. We also have um, clients and our clients are people that we serve with our um, business services. So we create content for them and we can help them you know, promote their business and create um, videos and products for them, and um, county residents. So county residents are interested in learning about news, so we connect to them really via our website um, and our newsletter, and they're interested in getting information that way, as well as through our YouTube channel, because it's something that they can access whenever they have free time. But the point is, it's really important for you to know and understand who your audience is, what their space is and how they're receiving media, how they're receiving information. Because if you're creating a newsletter, right, and you want that information to go to teenagers, it's not likely that they're going to read it and open it and consume it, right? But maybe someone like me, I read newsletters and I sign up for everything. 
I sign up for everything and I fill out every single survey that people send me, right? So that's, but I can't have that expectation of someone who is um, a teenager or someone who's in middle school. Because how we're going to teach middle school students is very different than how we're going to teach seniors or how we're going to teach young adults, particularly those who have never touched media before or who think they're very proficient, but we want to get the, build up their skills. We also have content creators. So we teach them how to do all this stuff, and then we need them to make content. We need them to make content for our YouTube channels. We need them to make content for our two channels that are on the air. So it's not just about, we're going to teach you this, and we're going to shove you out the door. We're going to teach you this, and then we hope that you're going to build content for us that we can share with communities to, again, amplify community voices. I keep going back to that, because that's my North Star. And then we talk about hobbyists and techies. So I have a passion for AR, VR, and AI. Uh, it's my boogie, it's my thing, I love it. So the people who are also in that space are uh, people who we're going to be able to tap into. They teach us, we teach them, and then we take it out to the community and we teach the community how to do it. Other hobbyists are photographers. We want photographers to come and talk to us. There's an AI component of photography that's flipping photography on its head. We can't ignore that. So we have hobbyists who are going to help lead the way for us and create space so that we can teach other people about what's happening. Other hobbyists are videographers. Thanks to this, we've got videographers who are making reels, who are doing short, these short little pieces of media that grab people's attention. So for the folks who are not reading the newsletters, we have to figure out how to create content to get to those middle schools, those teens, and then people like me that have short attention spans who want that information. So we're getting uh, to those folks who can create content for us, those folks who use this as a hobby, and we want to show them how to take their hobby in media and actually turn it into a business and do work for us too, which then helps our community and our other audiences that Jasmine talked about. 